to the Leah Andrews Show. I am here with Master Orchid Grower, Barb Mirza. She's also president of the Southwest Florida Orchid Society. And she is here to show orchid novice orchid growers like myself how to really grow orchids. Cattleya orchids. And I'd like to show you something about culture of cattleyas. As you go along watering or culturing your plant and you see a leaf that has some yellowing, you should be alarmed because if you flip the leaf over, you'll see some white growth, powdery white growth. That's scale. And you should treat this plant with some insecticides such as seven or neem oil or uh, safer soap. And then it should do well. They hide underneath the leaf. You need to get underneath the leaf and down the sheath. Because they'll hide underneath because the sun doesn't hit, they hit them there. These are doing well. All this white is from some insecticide and the, the flowers are coming out. It's doing well. Here's a good example of, of scale. Huh. And it's dead. I can push it off. This is a heavily, was and it heavily infected with scale, Cattleya. It got, you can see how the leaf is kind of bent now. It gets underneath a sheath. You should pull that back. But it's been sprayed now, but it also got in the roots. So it, it's coming back, and the leaf is yellow, and you can see a little bit of root rot. This is a rot. I'm not going to cut it because I'm afraid it might just hurt the plant too much. So, Barb, I have a question. When you see rot like that on yeah. the bulb here, pseudobulb, mm -hmm. I guess is what you call it, what do you do with that? Well, if I cut it back, I'd lose, lose half the plant. Oh, but what if it was like at the end, for example? Just leave it. You just leave it. You don't... And maybe the next time you split it, you'll cut it all away. Okay. But you'll just leave it. This is not much of this plant. We'll see if it survives. See how bad it got scale? Yeah. And that's a really, it's coming back too. I can't tell you how. So even with a, uh, an excellent grower, so don't feel so bad. Because <laughs> even with an excellent grower, these things do happen sometimes. That's right, I missed yeah. it. And if the plant is hybridized and has weak immune system, it's going to get attacked. Because nothing around it got attacked. So the species orchids in general, do you find that they are stronger against these things than, than the hybrids? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It depends on your culture. Okay. Thinking about the scale, scale does not like water. So when you're watering your vandas every day or every other day, it's very it's seldom that you'll get scale on your vandas because you're watering them so often. Whereas these other ones get watered once a week, so it's easier to get more scale. Funny media, <laughs> it's what that brown, black pole is. What do they call this, Gary? Like... Uh, Bark. Some kind of barky thing. Is but it an or whatever? No, it's a about? kind of bark, tree bark, mm -hmm. that they compress. And then I put it in there to kind of hold the cattleya along with, I wired it. They love it. It's got a lot of air movement and the, this cattleya loves it. But again, that's a hanging plant. You may not have room to hang plants. But that's one thing, Barb, that you taught us was that you want to secure your orchids very securely to whatever they're in or posted on. Very secure. Because otherwise th that can be a ca that can kill them. Right. If they're loose. Right. And this one you can see so overgrown. I all it almost died. It got a rot. So this it lost a couple leaves. But I let it go into bloom. Once it's out of bloom, this is going to be soaked. The pot cracked and it's going to be repotted. I don't think I'll split it. I might just put it in a little bit bigger pot. It's really a beautiful orchid. It's gorgeous. Now that's another trick that <laughs> Barb taught me before I bought expensive orchid pots. Because this happens. They get overgrown and then to save the orchid you have to crack the pot. And so if you have a really expensive pot, you're going to be not want to do that, right? That's right. You paid a couple hundred dollars for a pot. This is a Cattleya that I probably mounted two months ago. And I just put it on. It, it was not doing so well. I bought it as a, um, a bare root. Anyway, full of root growth here coming out. It's going to wrap around this piece of wood and good to go. And it really doesn't look so healthy because it was dried out on a bench. It was a, a cutting, but it only cost $5. So I gave it a shot. And here, this is this uh, old growth cypress. It's going to be beautiful. Just put it in the corner, let it go. It's a great idea. And look how it's grown in there. And you know, if you wanted to, you could probably cut this off there mm -hmm. and just 
hang it up again if you wanted to split this. But that's one of the amazing things when you walk through Barb's collection and Gary's collection too. It's not just Barb's. Um, you see these amazing like works of art where you have these beautiful mounts that they have, have attached in, in creative ways. And I kept the names so I kind of know what's going on. This is Brogatonia. They're from Jamaica. I just love these. Mm -hmm. They don't like the cold though. You have to be careful. Here's another Vanda back out here. This was from um, Dan and Margie. Mm -hmm. I think they were like three for ten dollars or five for ten dollars oh, something. Wow. And they had a little picture uh -huh. and the name. And they've done great. So I got these last May. And at first I was afraid they're awful little. Here's the, I think it's going to be white. Because it would be dark. That's, that's the announcement? Right? Yeah. See? I thought... I love those little guys. And I don't know what color this is going to be. But they're going to do well. Mm-hmm. I think they came from Mac. And here again, here's some, some wood that I mounted and I just put the whole pot there. Compact. In fact, it's still there. I tried to cut some away, but it was grown in too well. Happy as can be. Here come the roots. Really fun. It's easy. And I can see the roots. If that had scale down there, I could see it. Mm -hmm. That's the nice thing about mounting them. Mm -hmm. I can see the, the, the uh, health of the roots. This one, too. This one will just cut a little bit. It, it really liked something going on here. I don't want to disturb it too much when I split it. And um, this is another cool idea here, too. Because oh, yeah, the pan. You, have, um, you put a pot on top, and then you can mount orchids on the sides as well. Yep. And I, I should do that with some of these. I just haven't. That's a great idea. Because the thing is, once you start room. with orchids, it gets out of hand. You just have to buy more, and then you can run out of space. That's true. <laughs> you just have to buy more. So here's a bunch of these oncidiums. That's exactly right? what it looks like that, the bulb. I don't know if it's the same Kind of mossy. I put them in some moss. They need to be watered. They're doing good. This was in some coconut But do those husk. like to be root bound or not? Yeah, they yes, do. they do. Okay, so that's important to know. And they need more water to see how tiny the roots are. Mm -hmm. They're smaller roots, so they, they're not like a big root like this guy. Okay. Now you, because I don't, I haven't done well with moss. Do you like moss? Yes and no. You need to repot it every year. This needs to be coming out and redone because it breaks down. Mm -hmm. It becomes acidic. Mm -hmm. So then the, the plants don't like it. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll have to do that too. And that's it. And we'll move to outside where we've got more I have cat lace. Now we've had a lot of wind lately, not a lot of rain. And this plant back here had yellow leaves starting. And I looked for scale, I saw no scale. I see a healthy root. And the only assumption I can make is it needs more water. I'll probably lose these leaves but I won't lose the plant if I pick up the watering. It's hard to water behind these guys. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. When you're growing, you want to try to be able to see your plants, and it gets difficult when you pack them in. And I think that's what happened to that guy. He needs more water. We'll water them today. Go ahead. They're all. So my question is, with are there some orchids that are more sensitive to fungus and disease? Are there orchids that you have to use pesticides and fungicides more often? The culture of our bandas seem to take a lot more systemic fungicide to keep them healthy. They'll get a root rot that you won't see until the leaves start to fall off. By then you've lost your root base. So at least once a month during the winter, I use a systemic fungicide on my bandas. Mm -hmm.